I've wanted to do a video about the security issues with S3 for a while. If you're using it yourself right now, there's a good chance you've made some configuration issues that could cause some massive security flaws. In February, I found this blog post and I immediately added it to my to-do for video content because I wanna talk about S3 and all the things people do wrong with it and how easy it is to find like an account ID. Since then though, our community member Eva has done a lot of crazy shit with S3 and other people's implementations on top of it. And honestly, this is a much, much better post and a much better video. And I can't not take the opportunity to read it and share with you guys the hack and the craziness that is how badly most people set up and secure their S3. If you recognize this blog post and this website, it might be because of my earlier video, 900 sites, 125 million accounts and one vulnerability. They're the ones who did the Firebase exploit that compromised a ton of websites and found $4 billion of potential bank credentials. Just crazy shit. Anyways, we're talking about S3, specifically how most people suck at securing it and some of the things that can result if you don't set it up correctly. TLDR, S3 pre-signed posts or other ways of uploading files can easily be abused with cross-site scripting or unwanted paths for uploads. Yep. If you're not familiar with a pre-signed post URL, it's an important concept that'll TLDR for you. Maybe this is going to be more than a TLDR. Excaladra, my beloved, let's get diagramming. You have a server. We'll call this your server. Your server is a box that does things. One of those things is make sure a user is the right user. So if you have a user, we'll have the user be a circle. Let's say this user wants to upload. There's a couple of different ways they could do it. They could literally just send the file straight to your service, which is a file upload where the user just immediately posts the file. Maybe it's part of some form data. Maybe they're just sending it as a post. There is, is some way in which this user that's on your service is sending this file to your server. Usually this has more steps though. Usually it's more like this, where the user will send some type of like permission request to make sure they have permission to actually do this thing. To which the server replies, yes, you can upload. And then, and only then, do we actually send the file to your server? In order for this to work, you have to have authentication checks at all of these steps. And once this permission has been granted, you probably have to re-auth too, because you wanna make sure that this is actually the person doing the upload. But you have to have some level of back and forth here. On top of that, it's important to recognize the sizes of these requests. The permission request is probably gonna be like literally one kilobyte. The response will probably also be one kilobyte. The file upload might be 50 megabytes. So now your service is eating 50 megabytes of egress where you're passing this to your server. We even talked about the other side though, which uh, honestly, probably better to have a different shape. I'll use uh, our good old diamond to represent external services. In this case, S3. This is the file storage on Amazon that most people are using for actually storing their files. Once this file has been uploaded, you probably wanna pass it to S3 so it's there forever. So we're uploading the file and then we have to route this through your service and then over to S3. So we have to eat the cost of ingesting the file as well as passing it over. We have to wait till the whole file has uploaded, have it on our server, and then pass it. If this file is too big, good luck. There's a lot of things you have to think about when you do this. Wouldn't it be really nice if instead of the file upload happening here, you could just have it go straight to S3? Wouldn't that solve a lot of these problems? It introduces its own problems too, which is that your server needs to know when the upload is done. So once S3 is done, ideally it's gonna call your service and say, by the way, upload completed. Because something has to tell your server when the upload's done. Believe it or not, the way most services work is they'll actually have the user <laughs> tell the server, hey, I just finished uploading. Because getting S3 to tell your server that the upload's complete is way more annoying than it should be. The main thing I wanna talk about here though is this skipping the step straight to S3. Usually what will happen here is you'll contact S3 or do your own things to sign to create what's called a pre-signed post URL, which is what gets sent back here. You signed post sent. The pre-signed post URL is a URL that was generated by your server that allows for a user within a specific window with specific permissions and like file delimiters to then upload that file straight to S3. So you'd request to your server, hey, I wanna upload a thing. I wanna upload an image up to four megabytes. Your server then responds to that user with the pre-signed post URL that they then post the image to to send it to S3. Pre-signed post is just th the way we do this for a bunch of reasons, largely because skipping your server means the ingress and the egress costs in and out get entirely eliminated. And the latency is much better too because the user is posting straight to S3 instead of going through a middleman. That said, pre-signed post URLs leave a lot of places to make mistakes, which is probably what this post is focused on. Back to said post. So you might've recently seen Eva's tweets about S3 upload and how many companies can't stop messing it up. 
Believe it or not, this is a much more widespread issue than even my tweets made it out to be. Check out Eva's Twitter if you haven't already. XYZ Eva, absolute legend, killing it with these exploits and security discoveries. I've learned a lot from watching them, so check them out. Anyways, this article covers two common vulnerabilities that they've found within S3 uploads, specifically within pre-signed posts. Who doesn't love a good cross-site script? XSS, everyone's favorite. You probably saw this one coming. Companies make a files.somecompany.com or cdn.somecompany.com subdomain for S3. And when you combine that with poor handling of content types of an uploaded endpoint, we can upload HTML files. And if their cookies are set improperly, we can use this to take over accounts. This is scary. The piece you need to know in order for this to make sense is that HTML and JavaScript tags that are served from a specific URL have access to the cookies from that domain. So if you set a cookie on google.com and you serve some HTML on google.com slash whatever, that HTML, when it runs in the browser, has access to the cookies that are on that base URL. If you set your cookies incorrectly, you might also have those on all your subdomains. So if you set your cookies where they work on files.google.com as well as on google.com, like the root domain, now if you put an HTML page on files.google.com and someone can open it, you have access to things that you shouldn't have access to. That is very, very scary for security reasons. It's one of the first things that people look for when they're trying to exploit services. Because now if you are able to upload files somewhere you shouldn't and they can be HTML pages, you can send one of those links like files dot google dot com slash my page dot html if in here I'm doing some nasty stuff with cookies and Google's cookies aren't configured correctly I now have access to all of your auth credentials and I can now take over your account cross-site scripting is one of the scariest ways to exploit things and now we're seeing just why well soon we will see just why and what is possible when you use these exploits the first example Eva gave was a website called tally Tally is a modern Google Forms alternative, which allows form creation with images. For this reason, they also have profile pictures. They need to store files. That makes sense. If you have a form that has images, you need to be able to store images. They chose a customish endpoint that uploads a file for you to their S3 after performing checks. Sounds good, right? Not so fast. Here's what the request for uploading something looks like. So here's the request. API tally so slash upload slash block asset. And you get back a response. You have the pixel image, the name, the URL, storage.tally.so. And here's the image, pinkpixel.png, image.png, size 83. I'm sure that's like just 83 bytes. Cool. Looks interesting. But what if we tried an HTML file instead? Hello, image, source, X, on error, alert one. Cool. And now if we see this, she was able to post xss.html as an asset to this endpoint and get back xss.html with the MIME type being correct. This is a big deal because the MIME type being correct means that you can go to this page and your browser will treat it as HTML and potentially exploit it. Eva just pointed out that browsers will actually try to MIME sniff even if content type is set to something else. So if you don't manually set your headers as the host of the service, it's possible that your browser will assume it's HTML and try to run it anyways, even if you set some other MIME type elsewhere. So yeah, be careful of that. Cool. So now that it's uploaded, let's see what she does. Here you can see, hello, empty image tag that is broken, but it didn't alert, which means that something's getting trimmed. It looks like it didn't work. Let's look at the DOM. Hmm. It looks like Tally sanitized our XSS payload out. So they kind of thought of this, but it's likely not foolproof. That's very interesting that they let you upload HTML. They just try to sanitize it before it gets to the user to remove things like JS tags. Fun. Let's see how this works or more importantly, how this gets exploited. Looks like it got sanitized, so they thought of this, yada yada. On error, fetch attacker URL script dot then, a text then, doing some evals, cool. And the XML and S is w3.org. This is forcing the XML parsing mode. Ooh, this actually works. This allows me or a bad actor to get cross-site scripting on files.tally.so, which has the session cookie in scope, but it's HTTP only. How can we get the cookie when it's HTTP only? Very interesting. Oh, ha. Thank you, Eva, for pointing that out. It's not an HTML doc, it's an XML doc because they're uploading this as SVG XML. Very clever, very clever. These are the things where like, if your service isn't accounting for it, you're screwed. And if you're trying to DIY all these solutions, they're not gonna work. We'll talk about the easiest ways to work around these things in a bit. And a early warning, this will include a couple self plugs. So know that but for now, XML, SVG XML specifically, seems like a good way to hack some JavaScript into a place where it doesn't belong. And according to chat, both Eva and Neothermic, a lot of places don't actually secure SVG uploads, which is terrifying, but sadly doesn't surprise me. 
So how do we deal with the fact that the file's endpoint is only HTTP, not HTTPS? Turns out that Tally has an endpoint for us that lets us get an authentication token from a refresh cookie, and its web app also needs this token for the API, so this is intentional. Here's my final payload served by my web server. We fetch this page with credentials included, and then a.json.then await fetch attacker callback, method post, body, headers, content type, window location replace tally.so. Very interesting. And here's what my silly little web server gets when someone clicks this link. So here they get the full dump of this user's information when somebody goes to the page. So if they send them that SVG and they open it, they get all of this sent over afterwards. The dot replace is just a cleanup so that it looks like you just went to the Tally homepage. It's not actually important. Very good to know. Our authorization token, no. <laughs> oh, Eva, organization. <laughs> Never change. Never change. Love this. Full pwned. Cool. One click full pwn of your Tally account. Isn't that just really good? Well, no bounty was awarded for this. I can't blame them. They're a startup and they still fix the issue very quickly. But as you can see, these exploits are very powerful. So obviously, Eva continued. S3 paths are tasty. Some services allow the user to control the path and key of the file to upload while uploading. Common libraries also do this. Next S3 upload. Oh boy. Don't tell me the next S3 upload library is this easily compromised. Interesting. This is a problem when the server doesn't check if the file already exists, allowing the client to override other people's files. Whew. I see where this one's going. And this is, again, something that people, every service I've seen gets wrong. Do I do the upload thing plug now or do I wait a little bit? It's very tempting to plug upload thing right now, but I'm going to wait for the time being. We'll get to it in a bit, I am sure. Exhibit B, Pally. Yes, I did choose this specific example to make it rhyme with Tally. <laughs> Never change, Eva. Anyways, Pally is a way for streamers to set up a donation page and split it across their team, such as their mods. They have channel banners and channel profile pictures, so they need a way to store that data. They chose to use S3 to do this. Here's what a request to upload an image would look like. API Pally GG V10 upload sign. ACL public read key is the key for the file and then file types image PNG. I already am seeing the problem here. My assumption before we go any further is that this key is something you're setting, which means you can set this key to something that you shouldn't be able to upload and then override it. Then this returns a pre-signed post URL. The key is randomly generated by the client. So what happens if I change the key into something that's already used by another user? Well, that's exactly what I did, and it worked. So for an entire minute, Thor's profile picture on Pally was a gnome. While watching pirate software for the Apex Situation stream, found a donation link with Pally, found a way to override it. Basically, it was just a classic case of insecure S3 uploads. Can I say upon four? Yep. But then here, alternatively, use something like upload thing to do the file uploads for you. I'm going to take the opportunity here because you mentioned it first. Upload thing was built to solve a lot of these problems. The number of places that I've seen that are doing file uploads just like entirely incorrectly, be it things like this, be it eating egress costs and ingress costs they shouldn't be eating, be it just not authenticating on their servers properly, be it allowing uploads that they shouldn't. There are so many things I've seen like everyone get wrong, including the naming of these things. Something that we do when we go to upload thing files or when you're uploading it in the first place, if I just go to my T3 gallery tutorials files, all of these files have a key that we set. And if you look at the URL, you'll see the URL has this key in front, and then it has the .png at the end. When you save this file, we're actually using other things to get the name that aren't included. And this URL for the file is generated by us. So there's no world in which you can override someone's file here. It's just not viable. You can't do it, which is, again, really important. And most people can figure these things incorrectly. That's why we did it. So yeah, if you want to set up these things correctly, upload things, really easy, really cheap. We have a guide on how to get started. It takes literal minutes to do. Some people, it actually takes literal seconds to do. We had a speedrun contest where people were setting up upload thing in literally under 10 seconds on a new service while also being fully authenticated, which is an important part. We actually require with upload thing that you manage everything on your own service. So if we see here, this file router, this is where you authenticate a user to upload. This code runs on your server because we so strongly believe that you need to authenticate the users, not us. All of these patterns are things that we're strictly enforcing because most people do these things wrong. So we just made them the default. We made doing them correctly the default. And as long as you scroll through and copy paste all this code, it is very, very hard to set up upload thing in a way that is unsafe by design. I also see some of the upload thing speedrun winners hanging out in chat. Embed set some insane scores on that speedrun. Embed just linked their records upload thing speedrun of nine seconds and 245 milliseconds. Absolute insanity. 
There was a couple of cheats here that let them do it so fast, specifically that they use their bash history to fill out most of the backend code here. But uh, yeah, that allowed them to set this up and get it working in literally seconds. Drag and drop the file, go here, and then you see it already uploaded. Actual insanity. So it should be that easy. Anyways, setting this on the client is a terrible idea, and I hope that by now you guys can understand why. Also, allowing the user to set ACL is terrifying. The results are not surprising either. When you leave things like this accessible to the users, terrifying. They also didn't offer a bug bounty, but they're also a smaller startup, so that's fair. Especially if they've fixed it since, like, you're getting your value out of this blog post. And again, check out Eva if you haven't already. She's good at this stuff. You can probably pay her to pwn your stuff and make sure you pay her for her efforts because she knows what she's doing and she deserves some money for it. So how do we fix this? We could simply avoid the examples above, set your cookies properly, and not allow people to control the key. Important stuff. In conclusion, S3 is pretty hard to do because of the common pitfalls people come across while using third-party libraries, specifically ignorance. If you're using third-party libraries to manage your actual uploads, it is pretty easy to do it wrong. This is something that we've extensively covered in the past, and S3's lack of good docs amplifies the issue. I absolutely agree. That's too hard, though. Can somebody do it up for me? There's many products available to simplify S3 or redo it entirely. Here's a few. Pumped to be the first one in the list. The Bicycle File Upload API, from what I've heard, is pretty solid. File Stack, I've heard a little bit about, but I'm less familiar with. Uh, simple file uploader and powerful APIs to upload, transform, and deliver things in your app. Cool. Haven't used this one, so I don't know how good it is to recommend. Also, the competition, so I'm not going to linger on it too much. But yes, this is why we built Upload Thing. We put a lot of work into it, and I hope this video helps you understand exactly why. Managing your files is a scary thing, and I see way too many people doing it wrong. Hopefully, this incentivizes you to do it right. And until next time, peace nerds.